In the news today, we have official confirmation from Samsung that the Note 20 series and some new foldable devices are coming, all the news on that, and some really cool new wireless charging technology that could help us charge even the tiniest of gadgets. Samsung have released an official statement of some upcoming plans of theirs, and there are three standouts in the statement that they made. The first is in relation to the Galaxy Note series, telling us that a Note series is officially coming. Of course, it's coming every year, we know that, but with what's going on, there may be some plans that have been changed, but we know now from Samsung, the Note series is coming this year, along with some high-end foldable devices, and we've heard all of those rumors about the Galaxy Fold 2 coming as well. So even with the uncertainties, we can be sure we're getting some new releases along the same timelines and schedules that we usually get. Also in the statement, Samsung mentioned 5G rollout for some lower end or mid tier models as well. They are looking to bring 5G connectivity to more and more phones, obviously, not just the high end phones. So this will be coming into 2020 as well. Now we also have news recently that Nintendo are actually considering using a Samsung Exynos chipset in some new Switch models. And this is really big news because we've heard all of the news with regard to Samsung working with AMD for AMD graphics on Samsung Exynos chipsets, which is really exciting because we may actually get some really powerful chipsets from Samsung. Samsung will be producing by the end of this year a five nanometer chipset, an Exynos chipset that should be going into future flagship phones. So that means the S21 series. It's not gonna be ready in time for the Note 20 series, but for next year, the S21 series is getting the new Exynos chipsets with five nanometer technology and the AMD graphics. We got the initial benchmark scores leaked recently, which show the chipset that Samsung and AMD are working on. It gets some incredible scores in terms of the benchmarks actually performing better than the GPU on the Snapdragon 865. So really, really exciting that Samsung can produce a chipset with really good graphics. And obviously Nintendo may be wanting to use something like this for a gaming console obviously speaks for itself, saying that the graphics probably are really, really good. In relation to the Note series, it looks like this one is going to just keep using the Snapdragon 865 or possibly a new Exynos chipset on six nanometers. As you know, the current Exynos chipset they're using just is lacking in power and power efficiency compared to the Snapdragon 865. So it looks like Samsung may be upgrading it a little bit using a six nanometer to hopefully bring it in line with the Snapdragon 865. So that is for the Note 20 and then the S21 with that new chipset. We also got news from DxOMark that they will be testing out the camera on the Galaxy S20 Plus, and this uh, score is going to be launched on May the 11th. So the S20 Ultra has already had its score, and it actually it gets beaten by quite a few phones, even some mid-range phones in there actually get a better score on DxOMark now. Now, I don't really trust DxOMark personally. I don't really put any weight into their scores, although it is one barometer. They do do a lot of tests. And yeah, the S20 Ultra does have some downfalls, the focusing issues and the dynamic range. Definitely get beaten by the older phones even on a lot of occasions. So the S20 Plus with that different camera setup may actually do really well compared to the S20 Ultra. It may even beat the S20 Ultra. Certainly in some tests like dynamic range, the Ultra will beat it on zoom, of course. But we should look out for that score next week. And with rumors that the uh, the Galaxy Fold 2 is coming with the cameras on the S20 Plus, it's really good to know what we may be getting in terms of camera prowess on the Galaxy Fold 2 when that launches alongside the Note 20 series. We will apparently in the future be able to use NFC to charge our devices. This is news that there in the future will be the ability to use NFC. So right now, if you want to use charging, wireless charging or reverse wireless charging, you need some coils and most of that is done with the Qi wireless standard. But using an NFC technology, this would enable much smaller components and it would reduce cost as well. The charging speed would be a lot less than what we're currently getting, maybe the maximum being one watt, which is obviously really slow compared to what we're getting with Qi wireless chargers now, which can go up to about 15 watts. However, because this is so small, it can be used to charge uh, wearables like smartwatches, 
maybe earbuds, AirPods, that sort of thing. It would be cheaper and it would require less space as well. You wouldn't need the coils. So this may be coming in the future to wearable types of products. So we can look out for NFC wireless charging in the future. That is it for your tech news today. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the other channel for lots more content as well. And I'll see you in the next one.